shake, shake, scratch an object move across the outside of the trailer walls like nails on a chalkboard. We were confused and terrified and, well, let's backpedal. It was the summer of 2012, a bright sunny day, just as any day should be. My friends Ariel, Emma, Hannah, and Riley and I decided to gather Ariel's house to sleep over and hang out there. And that's what we did. We ran and we sprinted and we ducked, trying to avoid getting ambushed by water balloons and getting sprayed by the hose. Ariel's sister, Brooke, and my sister, Maria, and their friends were the armed forces hunting us down with weapons of water. We played and played all day, and as fun as the day was, it wasn't ornery at all. Yet. As day turned to night, we settled into the camper to go to bed. And the other girls, the older girls, went inside to sleep. We watched movies, we played games, and we ate. And everything was fun and undisturbed. That is, until the trailer started to shake. Back and forth. What's going on, we thought. We all mentally listed things that could be happening. Is it wind? No, this is natural swaying. Burglars? Who would rob a pop-up camper? Kidnappers? Worse? We didn't know what to do. Then we heard scratch. Then again, scratch with scratching noises mixed with rocking movements and five panicky girls. It just equaled one big boiling pot of chaos. We all ducked behind the bathroom door. We were all frantic, and Riley was the only one keeping calm, and Emma was just wishing to find sleep. How could she sleep in a situation like this? This is as stressful as the presidential election. The situation continued, and we just were behind the door, and we finally resorted to seeing God is bigger than the boogeyman from VeggieTales to try to call him. <laughs> Wait, there's a scratching right at the window. Just one window. This is new. Oh, this paranoia is going on for too long. We, or Riley rather, decided to face our problems rather than cower from them. We went to the window where the scratching was coming from. It was a small window above a small bed, as it completely shut so we couldn't see the outside. And we didn't know that this was a good thing. And like the fearless lion she was, Riley laid on the bed, lifted her legs, and punched her legs right into the face of the figure we knew was making the scratching noises. We all held our breath, and the furniture gasped in anticipation. <coughs> we heard from the other side of the window. Everything was silent as Riley unzipped the window. You could hear a pin drop when <coughs> the image forced a high pitched scream out of all of us. Standing face to face with us was a red and black rotting zombie. No, not burglars, not kidnappers, but the start of a zombie apocalypse. Great. And right in its hand, he held a big, shiny axe, threatening all of us, sure to have made the scratching noise. Then, right as the thought that zombies aren't real crossed our mind, we heard teenage girl giggles. Maria Brooke and their friends, and the zombie, ran away and back into the house, leaving the rest of us in the trailer dumbfound. This really wasn't worth the stress. Throughout the night, we stumbled upon a few more booby traps, and one friend got diagnosed with a case of nervous peeing. But we finally managed to find sleep very, very late in the morning. At breakfast, the whole story unraveled. The girls were bored, so why not torment their little sisters? They went into the basement and scourged through all the Halloween stuff and got their zombie get up, then came out in the dead of night and rocked our camper. We were so confused that night. And then for, for kicking Sammy in the face, who was a zombie, and she still has bruises from that, and for just being the most courageous one of all, we named Riley the man. <laughs> when we were walking outside to go home, I glanced at the camper, and it subtly told me never to sleep there again. But on the inside, I think it was just afraid to. From this experience of mixed emotions, I have learned to always be aware of my surroundings and my sister. My sister always keeps me grounded, Amanda Seifert once said, otherwise known as Cosette from Les Mis. Though, she probably never got attacked by her sister by means of zombie, but the point is still true. Even though I steal her iPod, or she scares me and scares the crap out of me, my sister and I always have each other grounded in each other's backs. But remember, Maria, I got my eye on you.